Mary Carr says that bad sentences make bad books. Hello, I'm Brenda, this is Write Your Story, and in this video we're going to look at three beginner mistakes to avoid when writing your memoir. The first one is to write once and think that you are done. Once you've finished your first draft, I know how many hours you've put into it. I know it's taken you way longer than you expected. It's taken days, weeks, months, and you're done. You're proud of it, you've finished it, and you want to share it but that is not the time to share it. That is the time to actually start your rework. You have to be prepared to do rework. Mary Carr says that bad sentences make bad books. I would go on to say bad structure also makes for a bad story and a bad book. Not knowing how to do an intro into your story and an outro from your story in every chapter makes for a bad book. Not knowing your theme and your focus and where you're going makes for a bad book. Your first draft is integral, you have to do it but it's a starting point. It's the platform from which you actually start the hard work of rework and editing and revising. In my next video, I'm going to explain to you exactly the five steps to take after you finished your first draft. But I want you to know in this video, you are not done. That is just the beginning. And you do have to have the mindset, the intention to rework your work. So mistake number one is to think that you're done and you have only just started. Mistake number two, that is to tell the story instead of doing scene-driven writing. So what do I mean by that? When we tell a story, we often simply narrate it, and it's a lot like the conversational talks we have with other people, where we tell them where we grew up, what happened, particular stories in our life, and it's narration. But when you write a memoir, you want to do scene-driven writing, and the approach is different. See it this way. When you're ready to write, you calm yourself, you breathe, you slow down, and you put yourself back into that scene, and you start to play it again. You press the play button, and you let the story unfold like a movie reel, and you describe it as if you're seeing the scene again, and you describe what happened, how it happened, and you bring yourself and the reader back into that scene, and you describe it, you write it as if it is a movie reel, as if it is playing out in front of you. That is the difference, and that's the easiest way to describe narration versus scene-driven writing. Memoirists often fall into narration, just a retelling of their story, instead of a description of describing and explaining explaining through that description and that scene-driven writing what's happened. And when you do that, you actually transport your reader into the story. And your story walks off the page and they're part of it and so it goes on. This narration just really becomes he said, she said, and it gets very boring very quickly. I know I've seen it in memoir. Okay, mistake number three. This one I have seen and I've been guilty of it myself. That is to express somebody else's thoughts, opinions, or reaction to something in your story or to you. So for example, when you write your memoir, it is a one point of view story, your point of view. You write it, you can share your thoughts, your opinions, your experience, but anybody else in the story, unless they've expressed it to you and you're including that as part of the dialogue, and you're including that as part of the story, do not put in what you think their motivation was. Do not put in what you think they thought of the situation. Do not put in any opinion or point of view that is not yours, but somebody else's that you do not actually know. You're surmising, you think that's true, and you may be right, but it's not yours to share. You describe the scene, scene-driven writing, you put in the responses that played out that you saw, but you don't share what motivated them, what drove them to do whatever they did or to say what they did. You just say this is what happened and you leave it to the reader to discern that for him or herself. 
and that is really a key problem we often have with writing memoir. We want to share our point of view and then we also want to say, well, the fact that that happened is because this person was thinking or feeling this at this time or they're motivated by their upbringing, which was whatever it was. No, 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 that is not what you want to do. So let's recap on those top three mistakes. One, writing once and thinking you're done. Two, doing narration and not scene driven writing. And three, sharing the perspectives and points of view of other people in your story. You don't do any of those. And if you click and subscribe, we'll keep talking more on how to write your memoir so it's engaging, how to develop the skills you need to know in order to write a great memoir. If you haven't received it yet, I do have a download below called The Seven Key Ingredients to Writing a Great Memoir, one that others will want to read. So do click on it. It's free. Download it. Get your copy. Subscribe. Click on the notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video where we talk about the five things you need to do once you've written your first draft. I'll see you in that video. Bye.